you're not hearing this. Um, but as we get started, I wanted to welcome everyone for joining us tonight. My name is Danny Berkowitz. I am the Community Programs Manager at Gloss Genius. I am so excited to be joined tonight by my friend, uh, one of our Gloss Genius educators, a longtime community member at Gloss Genius, a Sunlight Professionals educator as well, Kendall Whitley. Kendall, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm so excited. Yay. We're going to have a blast going through some really easy tactics and strategies for making your salon or spa business more inclusive at every touch point for you, for your team, your clients, and the entire community that you serve. Um, but before we get started, I want to just make sure everyone's comfy and having fun while we're using this awesome platform, Livestorm. So this will allow us to connect with one another. Kendall and I will be leading the conversation tonight, but please join in. Give us some love. There's some fun buttons like the react button. Um, I, I see some hard eyes and some thumbs up. Okay. And some confetti cannons. Wonderful. Um, this is going to be great. This is going to help us feel like we're connected to you as you listen in on tonight's education, but also in tonight's community connection. Because whether you're here as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, or you're an ally, or you're someone who wants to be a better ally, welcome. You are in the right place. And this is a brave space for us to be together, hold conversations that are important, but create it in a way so that it's accessible and we can talk about it openly because that's the best way that we learn and that's how we can be a better community to one another. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, all snaps all around. Um, so before we get started, I just wanted to share some expectations for tonight um, and share with you guys what the workshop agenda will be. So I think it's important to always remember why we're gathering. Um, if this is your first Gloss Genius community event, welcome. If this is not your first event, but something that you've been really looking forward to learning about, we're so happy that you're here. Thank you for giving us the space to share this really important topic. And I think by the demand of all the people that wanted to show up tonight, that says a lot. But in case you're on tonight's call, and you're learning, feel free to pull out your phone at any time, share a picture, tag Gloss Genius, let us know that you're having a blast and that you're making this learning fun. Um, we're going to talk about why we celebrate inclusivity year round. We're going to interview Kendall and hear about her business that she's built from the ground up and specifically how she implements inclusive practices from the get go. And then we want to help you understand what are your client touch points, what are ways that your clients can feel more at home or respected or even heard um, in a way. And at the end of the day, we're not here to tell you what to believe. I think it's more so giving you the option and education for you to make better decisions that will boost client retention, create better relationships with your community that you're serving. And again, that's for the people in your chair, on your table. Maybe it's for the team that you work with or the salon that you're trying to build. Um, I also wanted to share some really easy takeaway steps for making your business more LGBTQ plus inclusive. And again, this is it. This is for anyone. If you are a member of this incredible community, or if you are an ally and someone who wants to just hold space, no matter who's walking in through your doors, that's what's that's what we're here tonight for. And last but not least, we have a really special giveaway for some lucky winners tonight to receive a special gift from one of our Gloss Genius brand partners, but you'll have to wait till the end to hear more about it. So make sure that you stick around for the entire conversation tonight. We'll announce the giveaway and how you can participate. And uh, I'm telling you, you're going to be excited. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see some awesome chats in the chat. And uh, I love that we've got a whole 
array of people from across the country. And this is awesome. This is, this is incredible. Um, all right, Kendall, I think what's, what's where we should start is really just starting at step one, which is that it's pride month, but we should be celebrating inclusivity 12 months of the year. And so we're happy to support our LGBTQIA plus business partners and owners and their clients, not just this month, but every day. And when I approached Kendall to join us for tonight's special conversation, one of the things we were talking about is how do we make this attainable, accessible, and um, connecting the dots for those who are in our community that really need this kind of education. Maybe you live in the part of the country where this isn't something that's super accepted. Maybe you're that beacon for this community. Who knows? Um, just so tonight, as you join us, thank you for helping us create a safe space in the chat and for those who are on stage and talking, but also for making this important in your business every day, not just during the month of Pride Month or June. <laughs> awesome. So one of our goals and one of the things that we would love for you to walk away with tonight knowing is that you're going to walk away with a stronger sense of community and inclusivity within your brand and how your brand voice, your brand values, your brand practices can help you make intentional strategic decisions for your business. And this means don't leave any money on the table. If you're not making your inclusive practices, you're missing out on providing service to clients in need. Um, what are, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, but um, those are that's just some of the tastes that we want to give y'all in terms of encouragement and support and education tonight. Okay, without further ado, it is my honor to officially introduce our co-host for tonight, Kendall. Please share the mic with me so that I don't have to yap all night. Welcome. I'm so happy that Hello, you're thank you for inviting me. Of course. Thanks. How are you doing? I am so ready to talk about this. I'm so excited happy, <laughs> to geek out. Happy Pride to you. Tell us about who you are and your journey to becoming a salon owner and someone who creates these inclusive practices, not only for you, but for other businesses in our industry. All right, so I am a sweet owner now. I've been a Gloss Genius educator for the last five years, and I came out right when I went independent, and that totally changed my business because I do live in one of those areas that's not necessarily inclusive. Um, so I had to really rethink who I'm trying to connect with and how I'm getting seen and who I'm serving, and it just so happened to be like, the best thing that ever happened in my business was to have 50% of my clientele leave when I came out so that I could invite in new clientele um, that was really aligned with me. Um, so that kind of was the start of revolutionizing my practices, my messaging, and all of those things that, um, that come with it. Um, who, who were some of the inspiration or influences for you as you were coming out as a business owner or even just thinking about how can I change the game where I live? I think that obviously the dress code project is huge. Um, Tell us about that. What is the dress code project? Uh, so the dress code project is an organization that has created the concept of like gender affirming haircut club basically. So they teach um, salon stylists how to host these events for gender affirming services. They offer education on, um, you know, pronouns and like behind behind the chair, hands on education, but also um, produce the days, um, host the, you know, the days for free accessible haircuts. Absolutely. Um, and from them. It, incredible. I feel like having that community as you start out in your career is one of the most important things that you can do you know being aware of who is in your community who are the elders that you can look up to who are people that you admire um, who are creating those practices um, especially when you're kind of carving that path out for the first time in your city maybe you live in a really queer friendly city and there's a lot of density in terms of 
inclusive businesses, or maybe you're like Kendall and you live in an area where that's not always the case, um, especially for different types of affirming services and even just gendering those services as well. We'll talk about how to peel back those layers in a little bit. But one of the things I wanted to ask you, Kendall, and a question from our community was, what is some advice that you would give someone who is who has had a business for a couple years um, and who wants to implement these these inclusive practices now? What are some what's some advice that you would give someone if they were beginning this journey, but not necessarily beginning their business for the first time? So the the biggest place to start with any kind of change is unlearning what you have already internalized, especially being in the beauty industry. We've internalized so much messaging that is gendered or just really kind of outdated um, in a lot of ways. So I think the biggest place to start is unlearning and, you know, just being open. Um, Absolutely. Reaching out to resources either locally or online that are leading the conversations. Even just showing up today is a great place to start. I, th- I completely agree. That's a great point. This is step one. Mm. And we really appreciate you being here with us. So um, a couple of the other things that I wanted to share and that I'd love to dive in is, could you tell us more about Hair for Everybody and the, the brand that you've built and how that is woven into every step that you make with your clients. Yeah, so whenever I moved into a suite, I decided to rebrand and um, everybody came to me because Betty is my grandmother, so she was my first muse. And then obviously everybody, everybody, there's a connection there. I wanted to make it known right off the bat in the name of the business that this is a space for anybody that connects to it. Um, and then also there's that little bit of, because it is named after my grandmother, who is this beautiful Southern woman, but she was raised in a generation that doesn't have the language and the tools that we do now. So I serve all kinds of clientele from, from her all the way down to my sweet 18 year old babies that come in for head club for free haircuts. Oh my gosh. I I didn't know that it had anything to do with someone so special to you. I didn't realize the double meaning there, but what a great way to align your personal values, the kind of professional and person that you want to be with your brand business and what you want to offer to your clients. Um, You mentioned Head Club. Can you tell us a little bit more uh, more about that? I know that um, for those of you who saw that we were having this event from Kendall's amazing uh, reel that she created over the weekend where she was talking about different inclusive practices. If you haven't checked that out, head to Gloss Genius's Instagram and you can see some quick tips there. Um, But tell us a little bit more about what Head Club is. That sounds so intriguing. Also, I've seen the Head Club, I mean, the Head Spa Virality online. So that's that's got my, my ears perked. Tell me more. So I do offer head spa services, so I love playing on that. I also love the idea, head is in everything, Mod Head Creative is my Instagram, head club, head spa, so it's in everything. And I really like using the word head instead of hair because it's not just hair that we're doing. I really am here to hold space and change the way that people access these appointments. Um, so head club was born from the idea of offering the free gender affirming haircut days, but I wanted to incorporate it regularly into my practice. So it is a monthly free or sliding scale haircut program that people can get on no questions asked and access care in my community. Um, it was also a direct response for the need for gender affirming care in my community at a time when there's been lots of rollbacks on that. Um, so it was just a really born from a need a few years ago, um, started with me and my close friends just trading and doing it together and then has become something that I get recognized for out in the community. I love that. I, I have a couple pictures here that are part of Kendall's booking site um, where it tells us a little bit more about what the head club is and something that caught my eye when I saw this was radical hair care. And to me, the whole point of pride was that it was a riot. 
um, Pride Month is recognizing a historical moment in time when queer people were, were not being given the same rights as everyone else. And in a time where that was extremely, you know, dangerous almost to be out, um, that, was a, that was an act of radical practice. And that's really cool how you're bringing it into your business today in 2024, where we still have to fight for those rights, but it's in the way that you're making that radical move in your personal way. Like it makes it feel like you can make a difference because you're doing it one head at a time. You're serving one community member at a time. I think that's, that's amazing. Yeah. It's helped me heal my own heart living um, in Florida as well. So <laughs> Absolutely. And tell us a little bit about um, the process that your clients take when they get to your booking site. I'm happy to share that in a separate tab in just a moment. Um, but tell us a little bit about the journey in terms of the touch points that your clients experience from the time that they see you on Instagram to after their appointment. So I do get a lot of traffic for Head Club from Instagram. I also do a lot of community outreach directly. So teaming up with local organizations that support um, queer initiatives, um, just kind of trying to get the word out there that this is a service that exists in our area. Um, I've also teamed up with uh, or registered myself with Strands for Trans and Everywhere is Queer, which are two really good organizations to list your business on. Um, so people really find me mostly there. Um, and then as they move through the booking process, I have a separate category for Head Club on my website. So I know and they know that they're getting a sliding scale or free you know, appointment off the get go. There's no confusion when they come in. Um, and then once they click on the category, you book a little appointment, you fill out your profile. Years ago, Gloss Genius uh, incorporated pronouns in the profile as well, which is awesome. Um, I think that was there before I even had a form myself. So it was like the one touch point that people were able to share their pronouns with me. And it's also listed on the client profile. So every time you see their name, you see their pronouns uh, with Gloss Genius, which is awesome. And then um, also having my my pronouns listed as well. Since we're talking about pronouns, that's something that is really important that you share yours and you don't just subject somebody to, you know, sharing their own, being vulnerable right. with you before you offer that yourself. But um, so, so yeah, so you book an appointment and then you get a form for Head Club, which is um, just sharing a little more about where people are at on their journey. Because with a gender affirming hair appointment, it could be the first time somebody's ever taking a lot of length off or seeing themselves in a new way, or, you know, they could be anywhere on their journey, but it's really important to know where they're at before they come in so that you can kind of prepare for that. And then I make sure that we communicate via email and text before their appointment. Um, they get into the space. I make sure to show them around, um, show them where the bathrooms are and all these kinds of things. And then I have some other things I'm sure we'll get into that are part of the experience once you're here. Yep. Um, follow up as well. I make sure that I partner with inclusive companies. So, like retail and, and products right. you so use. Throughout the, the entire experience from people finding me to post visit stuff, there are touch points along the way that celebrate inclusivity and, and normalize it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me open up your booking site so we can just have a quick look at that because um, I think it's worth checking out and we can share your link in the chat as well. So this is Kendall's booking site. She utilizes Gloss Genius's gold plan. Clearly she has this gorgeous, um, I'm not sure which theme, it is, uh, but I love the colors that you've used. It's giving a very like sage eucalyptus vibe. <laughs> um, Kendall's got all of her, her services here. But what I really want to point our attention to, um, is this where I can find the form? Yeah. Um, the, the form is in the follow-up text. Ah, so uh, gotcha. Right. Uh, but yeah, 
in there. Yeah. Oh, here we go. The guest manual. I'm sorry. Sorry to drag you guys. Um, but I think that this is a great example of something that Kendall does really well, which is she is thought of every step about of that client's journey. And especially if you're trying to connect with a certain community within your clients, or you're trying to connect with a certain service, um, clients who would be likely to be interested in a certain retail item that you've just added to your shelves, or maybe it's a new giveaway, um, a new referral opportunity, a gift card opportunity that you're, that you're offering. This is a great way for you to communicate that. And I, I think you where, how did you make this Kendall? Was it Canva? Yeah. Oh yeah. Canva for everything. <laughs> Amazing. So it's really easy to understand what the booking process is, how to prepare pre and post appointment, what the salon mood is all about. Something I love about you, Kendall, and something you, you've been doing for your business is that you have transparent flat rate pricing and you're gratuity free. And I think that's really interesting from a perspective of being super candid about what you offer and not gendering those services as well so that it's not like a men's cut or a women's cut. And it simplifies the booking process because I do online booking. So it's also beneficial, not just for gender inclusivity, but really on the back end and for clients to understand what they're doing when they make an appointment. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Um, tell us a little bit more about the national um, organizations that you were able to register with. I think that's something really cool. Also want to shout out your Chamber of Commerce, um, any of those organizations that are local to you as well, not just national. That can be a really great way for you to list yourself, especially those allies out there. Um, there are a couple of examples that we pulled from Gloss Genius websites. One of them says, this is the Queer Friendly Barber. Um, they say, Queer Friendly Barber does not tolerate any form of hate speech, including but not limited to homophobia, transphobia, fatphobia, racism, sexism, violence, and hate speech. And I think like that's a really great example of explicit transparency. Um, and then there are other ways for you to insert and sort of sprinkle that inclusivity like Kendall said, at some point during the follow-up, maybe it's in the aftercare instructions, who knows? Yeah, and and having this messaging off of the get before people even come into your space can eliminate any of that awkwardness that might come up in the chair. I know I've been in the middle of a salon environment where there's conversations that shouldn't be happening on the floor. And when you're hands-on working with somebody in the moment, it can be really hard to redirect that conversation. So the need for me was to eliminate that from the get-go, which is why the imaging is really important, not just to connect with your ideal clientele, but to also create the ambiance in the salon. Absolutely. Your brand is reflecting your business. Your business experience is reflecting your brand. So the next thing that we wanted to share is a little bit of some level setting around creating those inclusive touch points across, across your specific business and for a, a way for you to put yourself in your client's shoes. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to our amazing uh, creative and social team at Gloss Genius who, in, who made these awesome posters. I'm gonna share them um, right here so that you guys can have access to them too and you can screenshot them and maybe even share them on your page or print them out, share them on your booth. Um, but there are a bunch of different um, art pieces all around all are welcome in your business, your salon, your spa, your tattoo shop, whatever it is. Um, so I wanted to give a shout out there. You can access those. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what are these touch points. So Kendall shared with us some amazing examples that she does for her business. But let's think about how this applies to yours. So what we know is that before that person gets into your seat, they are going to see you through your marketing. They're going to understand you and the services that you offer and hopefully book an appointment through your booking site. And then throughout the actual service and the appointment experience, you get to set 
and and live your brand out loud, just like we were saying that Kendall does in terms of reflecting both your brand values, your brand practices in the business itself and in the services, as well as in the follow-up. So here's how this kind of breaks down. Boosting client experience and satisfaction looks a couple different ways. We've got marketing, social media, of course, using pinned posts to highlight inclusivity, like the all are welcome in my salon. Maybe you repost that on your page. Um, the national resources that we were talking about a second ago, like Strands for Trans or the Dress Code Project that let you say, hey, I am an LGBTQ plus inclusive business. I'm an ally. Everyone's welcome in my salon. You can think about ways um, to list that on your booking site, in your about, your bio, your portfolio, services that you offer, um, ensuring that your service menu is not gendered, um, making a little, making those changes and tweaks here and there. I hear you, those who are like veterans in the industry who can't imagine changing the name of your service, that it feels like kind of confusing. But if you make small changes at a slow pace, I'm promise you that you can make those inclusive strength, uh, strides within a few months. Um, creating an intentional space is also aligning your brand with your business, business practices. So this means silent appointments um, and saving notes, providing guidelines, rebooking links and product recommendations. Another thing that I wanted to mention that I think you you said earlier, Kendall, is that you should consider ways to adapt for neurodivergent clients, clients with specific needs. That can be anything from curly hair to gender affirmation services. Um, creating inclusivity doesn't just mean making your salon welcome to anyone who's in the queer community. It, it means that you're creating these inclusive practices throughout the year, and ultimately, you're just making it more transparent. And again, I, I, I want you all to think about how can you boost those client experiences and that satisfaction so that you get the retention for your clients sitting in that seat again. Um, any questions about that so far? I'd love to hear. Oh, I see a couple people in the chat. <clears throat> Kendall, did you want to add anything to this in terms of understanding your client touch points? I think that the biggest thing you you talked about change and so i just want to touch on that again one more time because change especially in our industry is inevitable we see the rate at which change happens and when we open up our practice to be more inclusive like you said it is intersectional and it starts to include like we're not just talking about pride today we're talking about like you said like fat inclusivity and curly hair inclusivity in the salon and so it's really important that we take a, a another look at the way that we've always been doing things. Uh, oof. One time one more time for the people in the back. We should <laughs> really take a look at the way that we've been doing things. I I think that that's that's one of the biggest themes tonight. I want to call out some awesome comments in the chat. Mari, thank you for sharing this. Mari says I'm a neurodivergent esthetician whose business is based on making aesthetics assess accessible for neurodivergent, disabled, and LGBTQIA plus people. Mari, uh, that's incredible. I'm going to invite you to join us on the stage. I'd love for you to say hello and tell us a little bit about your business because it would be wonderful to hear that. No pressure. If you don't want to join, that's totally okay. Um, another comment that I want to highlight from Veronica <clears throat> I really believe that with your current clients as they come in, letting them know of the changes really helps as you make the changes because a new, a new client won't even know. That is such a great point, Veronica. Thank you for sharing that as well. Communicating those changes and, and being transparent with your community to say, hey, I'm making these changes in my business so that it's a better experience for you and being transparent about that as well. Hey, Mari, it's nice to see you. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Hi, yes, it's Mari. Mari, it's such a pleasure to meet you. I'm Danny. I'm the community manager at Gloss Genius, and this is Kendall. Hi. Thanks for coming it's on. It's nice to meet you, too. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about you. Where are you, where are you tuning in from today? Um, yeah, so my name is Mari, of course. Um, I'm in Tucson, Arizona. 
Um, and I'm really just starting up my business, to be honest. But I mean, I've always kind of tried to make it about making it more accessible for people like myself, because a lot of times it can be so uncomfortable to go into salons and spas, you know, as a neurodivergent or disabled person. Yeah. Tell me, tell us a little bit about your business. I know that you're an esthetician. Um, what's your business called? And tell us a little bit about the ways that you make those inclusive practices or any anything that we've mentioned tonight that you can share that yeah. you that you use yourself. Yeah. Um, so some of the things, um, like, first of all, my business is called Rosy Glow Aesthetics because my last name is Rose. Oh. Um, so it's just kind of a play on my name. Um, another another play on a name. Hello. Yeah. This is this um, is this is community. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, the things that I try and include are, of course, asking pronouns. I try to offer silent appointments if someone's feeling uncomfortable with a lot of small talk. I know sometimes I can feel un uncomfortable with it. Um, and I think that um, another thing is sometimes the products that I can use are a little rough and might cause some sensory issues. So I try to be mindful of that. And if for some reason somebody doesn't like how a certain product feels, we don't use it again. Wow. Beautiful. Yes. That is beautiful, Mari. Thank Kendall, you. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, I, I also practice all of those things in my business. And I think it makes a big difference, not only like we yeah. said for clients, but for uh, deepening, you know, the client trust for clients that I have had for years. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's a really great point, Kendall. Um, would you say that, uh, just, one, just one more time, I want to make sure that we really soak that in, that you're doing this not only for the new clients, and like Veronica mentioned, it's really great. And once you make those changes, those new clients won't even know. Mm -hmm. But it's also really important to make those changes for your existing clientele. For client retention, always. Yeah, absolutely. Being more intentional. Like that's where this all started was how do I get even more intentional with what I'm doing? And that started as products, holistic products, things like that. And it's just expanded into every seeped into every aspect absolutely and mari i completely agree with uh kieran who's from our customer success team we need to make a, a team trip to phoenix oh, thank you <laughs> like especially in that dry heat yeah it's not right now it's monsoon season officially now so, <laughs> so unclog those pores Folks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Mari, thank you for joining us on stage and yeah, saying hello and thank being you. Great. Um, thanks for joining this event and we hope to connect with you again and please come to another one soon. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Thank you for including me. Of course. Um, cool. So the, I think the, something we should do next is talk about some really easy practices because we've been throwing a lot of information at you, but let's break it down. So Kendall, I'm going to go from slide to slide. Could you walk us through these easy five steps for making your business more LGBTQ plus inclusive? And again, I want everyone to feel like that we're that this is open to anyone. This is um, not just for those who are in the community themselves, whether you are identifying, but just as a support ally as well. Let's go, yeah. All right, okay. so asking oh. clients for pronouns at booking. Right, so like I said earlier, sharing your pronouns first is really important and not assuming or expecting um, anybody else to want to share theirs or um, not assuming anybody's gender based off their presentation is a really big deal. Um, this can also tie into the language that we use at appointments, whether or not we're talking about feminine or masculine looking styles and things. Um, having those pronouns ahead of time can eliminate uncomfortability at the time of the service. Great point. And also creates that um, that inclusivity for everyone. You're not just asking certain people to list their pronouns. You're asking everyone to list their pronouns. And it normalizes it for people who, like me, use alternative pronouns. I use they, she pronouns. 
Um, so it, it creates that environment for normalizing it. And also just, again, for affirming people and allowing them to feel seen. It, wouldn't it be great if we could all feel seen in, in any identity that we have? <laughs> Our literal job, as I believe, as a hairstylist, it is my job to create space for somebody to feel seen. Mm, that's beautiful. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just so that we can see your face better. Okay, next, avoid naming or pricing your services by gender. We, we just talked about this kind of a second ago, but here's a great visual for what that could look like and how you can make those changes super tangibly. This is something that so many people have had negative experiences with. It's actually illegal in certain states. It's called a pink tax whenever we charge more for something that's labeled women's versus men's. Um, so it's it's something that we should all be paying very close attention to right now, like ha like getting ahead of it, because I, I see the way the market is changing. Um, and like I said earlier, it also eliminates any kind of confusion on booking um, and just makes everything really transparent. Absolutely. And I got to be honest, I think that not a lot of people know about this <laughs> still. Um, so having just planting a seed like tonight can be a really great way for you to think about making those practices in the future. So if you are someone who's utilizing neutral, gender neutral service names, please share with us in the chat. Give us some emojis just to let us know that you are out there um, because I think we're not all alone. Okay, great. I love to see the thumbs up. And there's so many ways to do this, by the way. You can do this by time. You can do this by length. You can do this by a session name, like name it something cutesy. Um, so mm -hmm. it's not just like you have to go right in. I'm time-based pricing, so I'm hourly. You don't have to do that if that doesn't make sense for your business. But Good point. And um, Mari mentioned this earlier, which is that it's not just about making it accessible for LGBTQIA plus folks, but it's for disabled folks, feeling comfortable, having a seat that you can sit in, um, feeling like this business was made for someone like me as well. Um, that I, I think is, is crucial and critical in some people's lives, especially in the self-care industry. Everyone deserves that. All right, um, replacing brands in your back bar and retail that don't support the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, so this can be really evident. Some lines still have like men's care or, you know, like a separate name that they direct towards men. When in reality, it's even more confusing for the consumer because what is a men's product versus a women's product? Like I wanna know what the product's actually doing so when you think about like not only the messaging that we're sending our clients um like you have to be a male or a, a woman to which by the way automatically eliminates non-binary people like myself right but uh but yeah but opening it up to just being really clear again like the transparency that we're trying to achieve within our business is only going to build trust with people so if we can just right off the bat be like this is an exfoliating mm -hmm. shampoo versus this is a men's shampoo, which is typ typically an exfoliating shampoo. Um, yeah, absolutely. Create that clarity. That's a, that's a really good point. And again, just listening to your business's intentions. Kendall, you can sit down. I don't know why. I don't know where I am in this thing because my screen's different than y'all. So just oh, as long okay. as you can't, but. <laughs> You're front and center and perfect. I, I saw your hesitation there and I was like, I don't know where you're, you're working too hard. Let me make this space accessible for you. <laughs> um, that's a really great point. I think when you align your brand values to to everything down to the shampoo that you're using, could you give me an example of another industry or another niche? Like if you're not in the hair industry, what are some ways that you can think about those inclusive practices? I think that the way that I approach my business translates to everybody. So it's not just hair care. It can be like, um, obviously aesthetics, nails, those types of things. Like I see it now they have 
nail salons that are like men's nail salons because they want to, you know, make men feel comfortable coming into that space, which I get, but at the same time, you're now excluding a whole 50%. Other so yeah. like, how do we do those things and make it actually inclusive? Like there are ways yeah. to bridge the gap again, all about transparency, saying what you actually mean to say, like, what are we trying to communicate here? Because it's not feminine because that means something different to everybody. So that's a, and that's a really great point. It brings up a great example. One that's in the chat right now from Veronica. I want to get to your comment in a second, because I think it's such a great point. The other example that comes to mind on the flip side, Kendall, and I, I kind of I'm not, I definitely am not uh, pushing back by any means, but I want to say that a flip side example, which I think is inclusive, is um, when I was living in Brooklyn a couple of years ago, there was a, well, actually it was like almost like 10 years ago, but there was a salon that was specifically inclusive for Muslim women who needed a safe space to be able to uncover their their hijabs and have um, a safe space for their community because of the restrictions that that re those religious practices have. Um, and I thought that that was such a genius idea because it carved out a space for you to feel safe. And um, I think that that's an, a great way for you to serve the community that you're trying to serve. So I, I think that that's one example. Veronica has this example in the chat. Um, she says, oh yeah, I'm starting to implement this for my nail salon. Honestly, the only reason we wanted to know if it was a man was because some techs have religious requirements where they're not allowed to touch the other sex. So we had some issues finding a way around that, but now we offer them the ability to switch clients and, our front desk is more involved to make that a comfortable switch. I think that's a great example of inclusivity, Veronica. It's working a little bit um, smarter, not harder, and ultimately being one step ahead of the client. That's I think that's one of the goals mm -hmm. here is right. being intentional about that. If you know that you have um, sort of this guardian of your front desk queen who's making this happen, then there could be a really great opportunity for you to just for you for your team to feel included and that that they're feeling safe um that's a really great point veronica thank you for sharing that what do you think about that kendall about that amazing salon i was sh sharing yeah well i've also had the privilege of doing muslim women's hair who needed a private space to uncover and like we said earlier, everything that we're talking about tonight is intersectional. Yeah. So when you start to put intentions in place that you get all the information before somebody ever sits in your chair, they're able to share that with you before they, they don't have to make a phone call and ask questions themselves. It's something that you're already asking. It just creates the room for them to have a really good experience that they might have never had before. Absolutely. Beautifully, beautifully said. Intersectional inclusivity. I think that's, that should have been the title for tonight's event. <laughs> um, but how do we weave in inclusivity at every touch point of your business? Again, not just in regards to Pride Month or Black History Month or AAPI, Asian American Pacific Islander Appreciation. How, how do we actually serve our these communities in our clientele every month of the year? Um, one more I wanted to, or two more that I wanted to add that I think are really important and are great segues into the next two, which is implementing anti-discrimination policy for both your staff and clients. And so Veronica, this reminds me of what you were working on in your salon. Maybe the policy is that, hey, if you sign up and you want a service, then we have the right to switch the professional uh, based on their comfort. Um, so finding ways that work best for your business is key. What else would you add, Kendall? Yes. Yeah, so this is something that I include on my new guest form and something that I have people agree to in their pre-visit form every single appointment. Um, it's included just like my policies are. Um, I want to make people aware every time that they're coming in that 
there are certain topics that won't be accepted in my space. Um, and, and to make it known bef yeah, before they even come in. So you have to click on it and agree to it every time. <laughs> and I think that, again, that, that's, that's protecting you, the space that you are in, the suite that you are in as well. I, I bet that you chose that suite based on your business practices. Um, thank you. And I think that that segues really nicely into this last key point, which is educating yourself, your staff, through team events and training in gender affirming services. I know we've talked a lot about this tonight. This isn't the only way to create inclusivity in your salon or spa, but having education, getting someone else to educate your team and you is also a great resource. Look to your community, find a local educator in your area who's running these conversations. Find a YouTube, a TED Talk, something that you need that you feel like could be a really great way for you and your entire staff to be on the same page about. Absolutely. So, and I will also, since you mentioned TED Talks, if anybody is interested in a 10 minute TED Talk, type in TED Talk gender marketing and watch that video because it's a marketing expert that details the lost revenue in statistics language um, that we're leaving on the table when we, when we market things in a gender binary way. I found it. I just shared it in the chat. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. That's that's so that's so great and applicable to anyone, regardless of which industry we are in. Thank you for sharing that, Kendall. Yeah. Awesome. And then I'll, I'll add one more little tip on this topic too. Um, whenever we start talking about gender affirming services, also like neurodivergent affirming services, we talked a little bit about having like the overhead lights out, turning the client's chair away from the mirror when they get in and facing them, facing your client directly, talking to them in the face instead of through the mirror. Um, there are so many little things that you can do while they're in your space to also eliminate any kind of uncomfortability that comes in that appointment. Because it just, if, no, if your client has never received a gender affirming service, there's most likely going to be hesitation even if you've done all of these things before they even get into your space, um, which, or if you do it really well, it could eliminate it, which I have an example of how the processes that we're talking about totally eliminate the angst before you even get into the salon. Tell us. Um, I had a client recently, a high club client that filled out my form, made their appointment, and then sent me this message. And this is literally why I do what I do. It says, happy pride. I filled out the head club form and I'm so excited. Honestly, the form made me feel so comfortable booking services with you. And I can already tell that even if I don't find my 100% perfect style this time, because like I said, people are on a journey. So a lot of, a lot of times they're not where they want to be yet. Um, even if I don't find my 100% perfect style this time, I'm going to leave happy with my experience and feeling better about my hair. And that was before they ever met me. <laughs> wow. That was before they ever even connected with you in person. This is someone that just took took the time. This is a great example of someone who might leave you a really great review. <laughs> They're showing we that are, intent. <laughs> we are friends. And they run, they run a community resource in town. They run a, a queer resource group in town too. So it's yeah, ever evolving once you open the door for it. That's awesome. Well, Kendall, I always finish all of our fireside chats with our community guests with a question that is really around your own personal advice. Um, so we're going to move into the community Q&A with Kendall, but I want to start off because I have a, a really important question, which is, what do you wish that you knew when you were starting your business that you want everyone to walk away with knowing today? I wish that I knew that you didn't have to conform to the preconceived molds of what it looks like to be successful. I had a lot of people tell me whenever I decided that I wanted to market myself as a queer stylist and market myself specifically to not just I'm a, it's a queer owned business. This space is, centered my messaging everything is centered around queer inclusivity because i feel like 
it normalizes it. And also my community deserves to see that represented. I had so many people like, you can't narrow yourself down like that because you know, you're gonna only have a limited amount of, of clients that respond to it. And let me tell you, it has aligned me so much more and fulfilled me so much more in what I do every day because I'm showing up as myself. I'm so glad this is being recorded because I'm going to have to play that 25 second clip every mm -hmm. single morning when I wake up every day. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Karen, for quoting Kendall. That's exactly my mind was just I melted as you were talking. You do not have to conform to the preconceived mold of what it means to be successful. Mm. I just want to give everyone a second to hold that in. If you're sitting down right now, plant your feet on the ground, or if you're standing up, or if you're driving, keep yourself focused. But join me in a little bit of a breathing exercise to remember that creating inclusivity means building community. And if you really boil it down to what that means, it's building relationships, not only with those who are you're lucky enough to get in your seat, but those who you are willing to build a community with and work with every single day. And as you build your team and as you continue to build your brand and your business, it's really in your hands and up to you to make those choices that are intentional and strategic for your business. And um, feel free to flutter your eyes open and join us again. I, I want to sort of transition into this next section of the call and give you guys a chance to talk to Kendall, who's our guest. Kendall, this Please is your my <laughs> <laughs> this is this is your time. I'll let you talk with your community. Um, okay, so if anybody wants to come on stage and ask Kendall a question live, we can totally start there. Um, I do see a question in the chat, um, which is coming from Elise. Elise says, what type of verbiage would you use for a waxing studio that has a unisex clientele? I have to say male or female since the time difference between services can vary. So Elise, I think that you answered your own question here um, because you said that the time difference between services can vary. So you would label that as time. Um, if you want to message me, I'm happy to like workshop what that actually looks like specifically to you. You're welcome to do that on Instagram at mm -hmm. Monhead. But um, I think that, yeah, it's it's right there in your question. It's time based. Um, That's a great question. Also, just to, to point out too that, uh, I don't know if you're talking specifically about like facial hair or intimate parts, but these spaces aren't gendered. They don't necessarily correlate with the binary male, female that we've grown up with. So. Mm, beautifully said. Um, and Karen shared this awesome site um, as a great reference um, of one of our Gloss Genius booking sites that lists those specific services as all genders. Um, I wish there was a way for you to like send in a picture and say, this is how hairy I am. How long do you think that would take? <laughs> so that is also another good point. I have all of my time in the um, description on my website. I have, if it's been six to eight weeks since your last appointment, this is your correlating amount of time. If it's been eight to 12, 12 plus. So it can also go by that. So whatever makes sense for your business, like what are we actually trying to, what information do we need to gather here to make the right appointment? Ooh, that's, that's, that's great. Um, I think that's a really great way to step back and not think about it as these genders or these services for specific genders or for specific people and allow that client to self-elect who they think that they are versus these preconceived molds that you were talking about before. And just to close that out, I would like to add that the World Health Organization does acknowledge that gender is a social construct. So it is something that we can, it is fluid. We can change it and change our verbiage around it. 
Absolutely. And, you know, again, it's it's in it's in your hands as well as a professional to define that language on your own page. When it comes to customization, Kendall, what are some of the favorite things that you use on Gloss Genius's website that help like speak to your values in that way? So definitely, I, I, let me know if this is answering your question correctly, but in the about section on my website, I have listed not only like all of the bullet points that we saw of what I do, um, but then also like how to book. So it's very, very clearly laid out. We book by time. This is what you're looking for. This is how you fall. Um, I also make sure that I am recommending to each client what they book every time. So that's really easy. And my favorite new Gloss Genius feature is the booking reminders. So you can send somebody an automatic booking reminder after they check out with you because I don't do pre-booking. Yeah. And they already know what they're getting in for because it tells them you're due for two hours in six weeks, whatever. So it like does it for you. Right. So there's no confusion. It, it again, transparency is the goal here. <laughs> and, and absolutely. Um, I, I, and I think that that's, that goes back to mental health and time and balance between work and life and Mm -hmm. making sure that you set yourself up for success. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Totally. Karen, you, you had some great, great, um, examples here. Thank you for sharing, um, one of the services from the Naked Mole Rat, which is an amazing business name. Um, Side note, um, as far as referring to body parts versus male or female. Um, And that also helps inclusivity because someone may not identify with those body parts um, or they may not identify adjacent to those body parts. This is great. We're coming up with awesome ideas, guys. Um, And thank you, Brandel, for sharing that as well. It's nice to see you. Brandel, you came to last night's event too. It's nice to see you <laughs> two nights in a row. Um, this is awesome. Thank you, Elise, for sharing that question. Um, I hope that you connect with Kyle, um, with Kendall, excuse me, and you're able to, to connect on those things. Kyle is our amazing social media manager. I'm blessed with lots of names with, that start with K around me. <laughs> um, okay, Kendall. So any last words that you wanted to share in terms of encouragement support, any ways that we can look out for some inclusive practices from you? So I will share something that I paraphrase that we've touched a lot on tonight, but I just think it's so important. Um, As a salon owner or a stylist, we are part of the market of the economy of the world. And we're also a quintessential part of people's identities. So we have this responsibility to normalize things, right? And the market has a societal impact, right? The economy has a societal impact. So creating inclusivity within that is normalizing diversity and especially at a time when it's so needed. Um, I think that was the whole point tonight. (laughs) That's beautiful. And I know um, someone earlier tonight, and I think it was, Ah, uh, Amanda, thank you so much for sharing that that vulnerable comment about how disheartening it can be sometimes when you're trying to make these changes, you're trying to break the mold, break those stigmas, bust those taboos, and it feels like you're a needle in a haystack. But making these small tweaks and changes are, is changing history. And you are a part of that. We are all part of that today. And it's it's one head at a time. I love that phrase, Kendall. I'm going to continue using that. Thank you again so much, uh, everyone, for asking these great questions tonight. Thank you to Kendall for joining us and hosting this super important conversation. Um, Last but not least, I do want to share this amazing giveaway that we have for all of our attendees that joined us tonight. Here's how you can participate. So um, we are working with OPI, yes, the nail polish organization, so you can celebrate your clients out loud. OPI has a chipboard display that's showcasing 12 highly pigmented limited edition nail polish shades from the OPI me, my, my me era collection. I love it. Um, and then we are going to be giving away 
to three winners this amazing LGBTQIA plus uh, line of nail polish. The collection supports OPI's partnership and Gloss Genius's partnership with them uh, with an annual donation to the Trevor Project, which is the leading LGBTQIA youth suicide prevention organization. Um, and this is actually the second time that Gloss Genius has partnered um, or contributed to uh, the Trevor Project, we contributed to them back in 2021 as well. So here's how you participate in today's giveaway. If you joined us tonight and you're still on the call, please take a screenshot. We're going to pose in just a second. You're going to take a screenshot or take a photo of you attending tonight's event. We would love for you to share something about your experience or what you learned. Maybe it was the biggest takeaway that you had tonight. Um, one of those mic drop moments from Kendall. What was that awesome quote that you had uh, before? I have to read it again because it was just so good. You do not need to conform to the preconceived form of what it means to be successful. Um, I'm carving that in the cement outside. And when you share this, please tag Gloss Genius and post, post it on your IG story. We're going to go through all of those entries tomorrow and announce three winners who are going to win this giveaway. Um, so the My Me Era collection uh, will be available to those three winners. All right, let me exit out of here. And then, Kendall, we can uh, do this. Let me. Can y'all see me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can't see myself. <laughs> I love the excitement for the giveaway in the chat. Give me just a second. Let me share this so that we can. Okay. All righty. Let's take a screenshot pose in three, two, one. <laughs> okay. Hopefully you guys got that. Um, thank you again for joining us tonight. And just as a reminder, in order to participate in tonight's giveaway, we would love for you to take a screenshot or a photo of you joining tonight, share it on Instagram, tag Gloss Genius, and make sure that you include one of your big takeaways for tonight. And we will contact you tomorrow if you have one. Kendall, thank you again for joining us. This is such an amazing conversation and it's definitely my favorite Pride event that we have hosted so far. And we're so grateful for your loyalty to the Gloss Genius brand and the way that you are making waves and making history at the same time. I am grateful that Gloss Genius wants to grow with me. So Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you everyone for joining us. And again, if you haven't signed up for Gloss Genius yet, I'm going to share the link one more time as a really great reminder. You have a two week trial ready for you to start and we'll see you on the flip side. Thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah.